All right, I think we're getting all set up here. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's still 11.59 here. We'll give it another minute or two. It's almost okay. So it's 12 o'clock. I think we can get started. Um, okay, guys, uh, welcome to Procedure Flows All Things API Art of the Possible webinar session. Uh, really excited to kind of work with my colleagues here uh, and kind of get you guys all the information needed. Uh, a lot of exciting things will be built in 2024 and beyond, but uh, to kind of needless to say, we want to kind of present an overview of what we've already accomplished uh, to make sure that you guys have all the tools and information needed on your end. Uh, you're probably wondering who we are, so we're going to get right into that as well with some speaker introductions. So um, I'm Reno. It's it's so nice to kind of chat with you guys and, and learn a little bit more about what your needs are. Uh, I'm the product marketing manager here at Procedure Flow. I've been here since April 2022. Uh, my goal is to kind of work at the intersection of, of sales, customer success, marketing, product, uh, to really kind of bring you guys um, all the information needed, as mentioned, and to kind of curate the product narrative and, and tell a really exciting story about what we're looking to do uh, by supporting all of our internal teams and, and some of the external stuff as well. Uh, I'll pass it along to my colleague, David, just to kind of mention a little bit about himself as well. Thanks, Reno. Um, my name is David Wong. I'm the lead integration engineer uh, with Procedure Flow. Uh, I've been with Procedure Flow um, since last September. Um, so as the lead integration engineer, uh, basically what I'm doing is kind of uh, planning, designing, and kind of implementing different integrations um, with Procedure Flow, um, and also kind of directly supporting customers on things that they want to do, um, different integrations they want to build, um, including the API. That's kind of one of our big integration points. So I'm excited to talk about the API today, and I'll pass it over to uh, my colleague, Judy, who I'm sure uh, you all know. Hi, everybody. I uh, I do know a few people on this call, I think. Uh, my name is Judy Demokas, and I am Procedure Flow's VP of Customer for Life. Um, so before we get started, I, I just want to say thank you. Um, so many of you on this call today have helped us grow as a company over the years, and uh, I really want to acknowledge that. So thank you for your partnership, uh, for your feedback, which is really what's made us a better organization, um, and for your support. So whether it's been acting as a reference for us by speaking uh, to a potential customer or sharing your procedure flow success story, or speaking at an event for us, you have been really, I, I can't say it enough, but you've been and you really continue to be so incredible. I, we can't thank you enough for all of that. Um, so here we are today and we're going to be talking about uh, the Procedure Flow API. So let's get to it. Um, API is technical in nature, as you know. So our amazing colleagues here, Reno and David, are going to be taking you through some practical applications on how the API can bring value to your organization. And also on the call, I want to mention are your customer success managers. So Jacqueline, Jillian, and Vin are on the call, and they're going to be reaching out to you afterward to get feedback on today's session, and they're going to connect you to the right people at Procedure Flow if you'd like to move forward with the API. So thanks so much for joining us today. And now I'm going to hand it back to uh, Reno and David. Have a great day, everybody. Awesome. Thanks, um, Judy. Really exciting. Thank you, Judy. Um, yeah, I, I think Judy kind of said it best. Uh, we're here to kind of support you guys and, and tell the voice of the customer. So without all of you guys here, you know, this isn't really possible. So um, another thing I want to kind of allude to is uh, we do have a few moderators in the chat. Uh, myself, Judy, and David will also be kind of checking in. Uh, we do have a dedicated uh, Q&A session towards the end of the presentation, uh, but feel free to kind of drop in a little bit about who you are, what brought you to the session, uh, any information is valuable. If you want to leave, um, you know, some questions in the chat now, we'll be sure to get to them throughout the presentation. Uh, we will be pausing at a few segments of the presentation as well, just so nothing kind of goes over the head in terms of too much information, not enough context. Uh, so without further ado, uh, Judy kind of teased at the agenda, but we'll get right into it. 
Uh, in terms of what we're going to be kind of providing everyone with today, uh, it's just a brief understanding of the procedure flow API. So we'll kind of go over a few API basics. We'll kind of define it through an analogy that I think will really resonate with the group. Uh, from there, as Judy alluded to as well, overview of the API functionalities and the capabilities. Uh, so some really exciting examples of everyday applications that David will kind of walk through. Uh, from there, we'll kind of show you our where where we are in terms of our integration library. So as mentioned, we built a lot of exciting things in 2023. We'll continue to do so in 2024, but we'll provide um, some actual examples in terms of what integrations we've built thus far. Uh, and then to kind of tie it all together and put a little pretty bow on top, um, the API Developer Documentation 101. So just giving a little bit of context in terms of where it is, a, a guided walkthrough, how you kind of facilitate its use, who it's intended for, and, and so forth. And then as mentioned as well, just a Q&A session to make sure that everyone leaves today's session with everything they intended to get, uh, and that we move forward with all the knowledge transfer that uh, is necessary. Uh, so understanding the Procedure Flow API. Um, so in, in, in terms of kind of simplifying it, because as you all know, or, or for those who don't know, the API is, is, is very technical. Uh, it's usually meant for the developer or, or engineering uh, audience. Uh, but in basic terms, an API just allows applications to communicate with one another. Uh, I think that sentence in itself is the simplified version. Uh, and to kind of wrap it up with a little bit of an analogy here, but anything that a human can do with a hand and mouse can be automated through an API. So it's really about manual intervention, simplifying things. I think that's the intended use case of the API. Of course, this is me just simplifying it, but uh, please keep that in mind as you think about some of the everyday applications we walk through, some of the integration capabilities. It's really about taking what your you know, internal uh, employees do and kind of simplifying things and making it a little bit easier for you guys. Uh, I also wanted to kind of give you a, a brief little run through of the product branches. So uh, as you've come to know, you know, we've released, you know, whether it's, you know, 2022 and beyond when I got here, or even before then, or even, you know, continuing on into the future, we built a lot of exciting features. Uh, up until then, these features usually lived within our, our user interface or our UI. Uh, the exciting thing about the API is that it, it's actually a mirrored version of our UI. So when we build things on the API, it's a little bit separate from what you're used to in product. So think of it, like I said, as a mirrored version. And as we release features, they'll likely fall into these two buckets. So the UI in itself or the API. Today, we're going to be focusing on, on the API and some of the things we've built and some of the things we'll continue to build. Discover new possibilities with our API. So as mentioned, the API is about, you know, anything a, a hand and mouse can do. We, in terms of our philosophy and what the API's intended use case is, uh, can be grouped into these five buckets. So as we continue to build our API functionality out, they'll likely fall into these five buckets in terms of simplifying things on, on the end user end. But the first one being just task automation, I think this is really one of the more important ones, but uh, it allows the technology to handle most of the workload, uh, which would otherwise require the effort of a human. Um, so that's the big one, <clears throat> excuse me. Next one would be further innovation. So it actually allows you to transform, create, and develop new business practices that suit your company in a less manual way. So the API, the great thing about it is it's very flexible. So uh, from that being said, it also kind of ties into personalization. So APIs offer the ability to personalize content with the information services that are most useful to your customers. Um, so I think that's another thing to keep in mind where uh, as we kind of walk through a lot of the information provided today, it's kind of a, you know, a choose your own adventure. Right? You can really kind of build out the API in terms of what you want it to be. Uh, next would be data efficiency. So API integration ensures different applications are talking to one another, uh, which we'll likely get into in terms of some of the integrations we've built, uh, resulting in a smooth transition of data between them. Uh, and then lastly, increased connectivity. Uh, APIs do bring you a competitive advantage in terms of allowing companies like yours to integrate services and content into apps and other devices. So uh, also kind of keep this in mind as we kind of get through the real world applications we'll present, as well as some of the integration capabilities we've built as well. Once again, another little analogy, I'm really big on these, but APIs, as mentioned, you know, are, are different from the UI, but they also unlock new pieces of the puzzle. So we kind of have two main kind of puzzle pieces that really kind of talk together as the API has been kind of built and as we continue to build on it, but flow insights and integrations. It really kind of takes the core usage and core functionality of procedure flow and it really intensifies uh, what is possible. So uh, simply put, our API helps you unlock additional flow insights and potential integrations with not only third-party service providers, but with other everyday applications your company is already using. Uh, so it's really exciting in terms of what we're really getting at um, towards 2024 and beyond.
Lastly, what does this mean for you as a procedure flow customer? Well, you know, everything I kind of mentioned is also kind of grouped into two buckets. Uh, I kind of teased that it in, in the slide prior, but additional insights. So with their API, the text found within our entry points and flows can actually be accessed now and exported by a developer on your team to kind of identify areas of improvement, simple process adjustments, and of course, flow performance. Uh, further opportunities around syncing the flows with the external systems is also now possible, which we'll get into in terms of the integration capabilities. And these things can be built or explored in the future. So it really is kind of a clean canvas for your developers to kind of take it and, and run with it. Uh, the last thing is just agent assist functionality. I know this has been kind of a huge buzzword in, in 2023 and beyond. Uh, simply put, our unique product design now coupled with the API allows us to plug into your external uh, systems and opens doors for us to support integrations uh, that really do enable real-time conversation guidance. Um, so we'll kind of present a little bit of context uh, as we kind of go through the presentation here. Also loosely define what agent assist is for those maybe not familiar with it. Uh, next, we kind of transition ourselves into the overview of the API functionalities and capabilities. Uh, so this is where we'll kind of show what the API helps to unlock. Uh, so what you're seeing right here is kind of the, the blue circle kind of representing procedure flow and the uh, reddish orange one kind of representing the API being built on top. Now we really kind of get into what's entirely possible. So, um, you know, flow backups is one of them, content analyses, flow visualizers, complex exports, printing the flows, um, creating kind of a cadence of suggested automations, having a global spell checker to kind of validate and make sure that you're auditing and assessing your flows to make sure that everything's kind of corresponding as it should. These are all now really kind of possible with the API. Um, the one caveat I do want to kind of mention that I have outlined on the slide is that you know, this is great, but it's it's very technical. That's the intended use case of an API, unfortunately. So the one thing is that this does become possible. However, it does require development and hosting to facilitate. So if you do have an internal development team or you do have the luxury of kind of looking into a third party technical partner, they would really kind of take all of this and, and really make it possible. To take it a layer deeper, um, I'll kind of break down some of the things that are possible a little bit more into actual tangible examples. Uh, so for instance, if you're interested in flow backups, what does that really mean? So this is just one, one of the many examples per these buckets, but you know, as terms of a flow backup, you can actually schedule a monthly backup of all entry points to a certain folder, PDF format, other formats. In terms of content analyses, you can really find the top parts of the flow, the most linked flows. You can really kind of audit and assess, as mentioned, like what's really kind of going on behind the scenes. In terms of a flow visualizer, I think this is one of the more exciting ones. You can actually graph out the flows as an image, a PDF zoomed out. You can actually take it. You could spot patterns. You could do a high level overview uh, with your internal team to really kind of look into, you know, what's being leveraged, what isn't, is there any orphaned flows? Um, we'll actually kind of provide a, an, an example of that in just a second here. Um, next one would be complex exports. So export flows to images, store them as PDFs, print them physically. Um, the world's kind of your oyster when it comes to the API. Uh, next would be suggested automation. So you can make suggestions about areas of the flow that can be automated or simplified. This really kind of, you know, leans towards one of our pillars of continuous improvement. Uh, it gives you just another tool and, and avenue for your team to really kind of look into, as mentioned, the behind the scenes stuff. And then lastly, as I kind of alluded to, the global spell checker, you can just build a report of all the flows that have potential spelling mistakes, right? Makes it a little bit easier for your mappers to kind of go in and kind of look at things and assess where you're at uh, and make sure that everything's kind of working as it should. So I'll kind of pause there. I'll, I'll see if there's any questions and whatnot before we actually get into the actual applications that my colleague David will walk through. Um, we'll see if there's anything. Uh, Judy, is there any questions in the chat right now before we jump into that? No, I don't see anything. Not yet. Perfect. Awesome. So this is a nice segue in terms of the example walkthrough. Uh, so I'll pass the floor to my colleague, David, here to just kind of walk through some of the things that I just alluded to. Thank you, Marino. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show um, a visualization of the flows. Um, that's the example I'm going to show. But before I do that, I wanted to just show like the data as it gets pulled from the API in Excel. Um, so to do what I did here, it will require some technical resources to connect to our API and get the data into Excel. Um, but I wanted to give the context that I did this all in Excel 
And it's, and it's not the same kind of development lift that building like a full-fledged example, like the visualization um, would require. Doing something like this is um, kind of lower lift. So I, I kind of wanted to show this first and, it's, and make it more tangible, like what data is actually available to you uh, through the API. Um, and I'll try to tie this back, all the data back to like the different examples that uh, Reno uh, just laid out. Um, so the first thing you could do using our flow API, you could pull the list of all your flows. Um, so what we're looking at here, I have an example organization, the, the 311 uh, sample organization. And all I did was pull all the flows. Um, every flow has an ID, every flow has a name. So the kind of things that you could do with this is, this is where you do the backup. You could do a backup of all your flows. Um, you could use this data and then add some programming logic to kind of loop through all these and print all your flows. Um, so again, it requires some technical resources, but um, just having the list of all your flows enables you to do things like that. Um, but again, it becomes more interesting when you start pairing this data with all the other data. So let's say on that first flow, you want to drill down into like, you know, what do I have in these flows? I want to do some more analysis of like the content of the actual flow. Um, so Reno, if you go to the next worksheet there. Um, so what we're looking at here, um, so there's kind of a call of, the columns that are going to be relevant that I'll, I'll kind of bring your attention to are these last two columns here, column E and column F. Um, but so what I've done here is I've pulled the data from the default flow that you land on when you open this entry point, um, just for demonstration purposes. And in column E, what we see here is the text. Um, so this is the actual content of that flow. So you can retrieve all the content from your flow. Um, and you kind of do interesting things with that. Reno mentioned the spell checker. So this is how you do something like that. You pull all the content from your flows, run a spell check on it. Um, it could also be something like, um, maybe your flows reference an external organization and that external organization changes its name. You wanna programmatically ensure that you don't have the old name anywhere in your flows because you don't want the agent using that in the calls with customers. Um, with the API, you could automate something like that. Um, and with the content, you can actually feed this to different systems. So we talked a lot about the integrations, um, but um, with the different integrations, for example, let's say Salesforce or AWS or Genesis, um, they have their own kind of AI that's gonna basically do agent assist and it's gonna recommend different flows. Using the content, that's how the AI would do that. The AI needs to know kind of what content um, the flows have and using that API, that's how you start to build something like that. Um, so that's kind of like just high level, some things you could do with the text, um, but I'm sure you could think of other, other things you could do as well. And then lastly, I'll quickly touch on the flow ID there. So on, on the column F, what that is, is that's the flows that this particular flow is linked to. Um, so we talked a lot about building the graph of how your flows are linked. We talked a lot about, um, or Reno mentioned like orphan flows, things like that. Um, so Reno, if you go to flow links, just the next worksheet there. Um, so all I've done here is I basically pulled all the linkages between all my flows and something simple like this, you can do a lot of things. Um, so the orphan flow example, you can, you can, uh, using this data, you can check, do I have any flows that actually aren't linked from any other flows? Um, and there might be, it might be an important flow. Um, so using this data, you can do something like that. And then the link validator. So maybe there's you have links that actually aren't valid anymore because maybe you deleted one of these flows. Um, so you could build an automation to basically on a regular cadence validate that all your links are valid. Um, so these are kind of the type of things that you might want to do. Um, and then, yeah, I think I think that we can kind of go to Reno. We can pop to the session events. So this data, um, I'll, I'll, it's this is kind of a little more obvious what you do. So this is, um, I'll say recording. Um, so to give you context of what we're actually looking at here, because I know it's just kind of a wall of data. Um, every time one of your agents clicks on a flow, that's going to put an event in our, our database. Um, to And then through our session events API, you have access to all those events. Um, so there's a lot of reporting things you can do there. Um, so just talking through the columns, you have the, in column E there, you have the user ID. And then it's just the ID, but with that, you can pull the user's name, the user's email. 
Um, so you know who actually opened this flow. On column G, you have the time that they opened the flow. So using that, you can kind of see what their traffic pattern was. You can see, okay, they opened this flow, they were on this flow for two minutes, and then they moved to the next flow. Um, and then obviously in, in the last column there, you have the actual flow that they were looking at. So this is a little more obvious, like from a reporting standpoint, what, what you might want to do. Um, so using the sessions event API, pulling this data, it's pretty easy to do like, um, you can do a quick pivot. Um, you can say, what are my most viewed flows? Easy to do that. You have all this data. You can pull that relatively easy. Um, how long are my agents spending on the different flows? You could do that here as well. Um, you, you might need to add another column to do that calculation between the flow that they were on and the flow that they're currently on just to, to do the time difference. But you could build a picture of how long they're actually spending on flows uh, because there might be flows where they're spending a lot of time um, and you might want to look into that. It might make sense. Um, and then the user ID. So you could actually see which users are using which flows, pair that with the duration to see how long each user is on each flow. Um, and with all this data, you can pair this with all the other data you have. So I just want to mention that as well. Like um, you're building a whole story of like how your agents are interacting with procedure flow and the flows. Um, so you can pair all this data. Um, yeah, and, and Reno, we can quickly go to just the, the, the pivot chart, the pivot table there. So very quickly, you can just take all that data, create a pivot and, you know, the world's your oyster at that point. You could create whatever pivot you want uh, to drill down to, um, you know, different pieces of data you want to look into. Um, so that's that's just the data. I wanted to just to show that, to show that you could do this in Excel. You can pull the data. If you have your technical resource, they have the documentation, they have the API, they can start doing stuff like this. Um, and it's not a huge list to do something like this. You do need to develop a resource, but, um, this is accessible to you from the API and you can start doing kind of simple uh, reporting stuff like this. Um, but now, uh, Reno, I think we're gonna pause here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hop into an example of an actual visualization that uses all this data and kind of puts it all together. But before we do that, all right, I think we'll pause here, Reno, for any questions. Yeah, um, well, as alluded, um, we'll, we'll pause to see if the, the group has any questions. I know this is kind of a lot to take in, but um, the API is very technical, but this is kind of a very similarized viewpoint of, of what is possible, right? And so, um, you know, to your development team internally, like this language all kind of makes sense. All of this is very easy. So, I, you know, let's... Uh, obviously kind of show the real world example, but I think just, it just, just speaks to, to what is possible. I think that's obviously the main theme we wanted to set here, but um, I don't see any questions coming on my end. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a couple here. One from Sayad. Uh, if we're using a service like Postman um, to make calls, how do we get the exports into an Excel table? Yeah, um, so I kind of answer that in a couple of ways. So the setup, just talking um, to like what I did in Excel here, what you have set up in Postman, you can set that up in Excel too. And then you don't have to do any like export. It's kind of all there in Excel. Um, but if you aren't doing that, um, you're going to get the data in like a JSON format. And you're basically going to just have to convert that JSON format to CSV. I'm not sure if Postman will do that out of the box. Um, it, it might actually do that. I, I believe actually Postman kind of lets you visualize that and do that export. So um yeah, you'd have to kind of check that in post postman, but I, I know you can do that. Okay. Question from Maggie: For the time spent on each flow, did you say uh, that you're comparing the time stamps between the flow sessions? Uh, that's right. Yeah. Um, so Reno, I think if you pop back over to the session events, um, so the way that, and, and we have at, we have had customers that that do this. Um, so the way that you would do that is you have the session ID. So that's the session of uh, that's the ID that's associated with the session for your uh, agent. Um, and then you have their ID and then you have the timestamp. So you basically would sort it by those three things. And then you get a picture of like, they're in this session. They clicked on this flow at this time. And then they clicked on the next flow at this time. And because you have it sorted, you know that there's no flows in between. So that's how you kind of build that duration. You are comparing the timestamp. So to answer your question, that, that's right. And one more question from Nathan. Are there tools that we'll get to go back and make these Excel spreadsheets? 
Um, no, so we don't, there is no tools that we could um, provide to do that. So what we, what we would provide is we have the documentation. So if you have um, anyone on your team who's used APIs before is familiar with APIs, um, they can use that documentation. It's well laid out. Um, they can use that to understand the API and then they could do this in Excel. Um, they might have never used Excel before to actually make API calls. Um, I actually hadn't used Excel to do things like this before earlier this week, but um, it, it is straightforward enough in Excel to uh, use an external data source to pull it into Excel. Um, so we don't have that tool, but Excel, that, that's a feature of Excel and um, pair that with the API documentation. If you have that person on your team who's used API before, um, they should be able to do something like this um, with a relatively low lift. Um, it, it's not a huge time commitment to do something like this. Thanks, David. Oh, Tracy has a question. Are there any plans to dashboard statistics within an admin area on procedure flow in the future? Um, that one's kind of like a roadmap question. Um, I would say yes. We're, we're all we're always have plans on improving uh, the reporting capabilities in Procedure Flow. Um, so I can't give. Yeah. Yeah, I would say the the plan would be to enhance what's there for reporting today. Um, we don't know what that's going to look like yet, but we're going to be working with uh, with the engineering team on that in uh, in the near future. Yep. Yep. That's definitely on the roadmap for this year. Um, okay. Awesome. Um, Sounds like a lot of great questions, which is good. I, I think that obviously kind of sets the stage for, for taking all of this data that we've kind of walked and sorted you through and kind of applying it uh, in terms of a visual layout. Uh, so David, are we ready to present kind of the traffic patterns? Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. All right. So this is really kind of exciting stuff, but uh, let me just zoom over here quick. And David, maybe you could just kind of present some context uh, while I'm kind of doing that here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what we're looking at right here, um, this is the output of an example kind of proof of concept program that our engineering team built. Um, so this is not something that you can do right out of the box with the API. Um, and this isn't something that we could just give you the code to, to do yourself. However, it's it's meant to be an example of something that your engineering team or your development team, your, your technical resource could build with the API. Um, you have all the tools to build something like this. Um, so I just wanted to kind of give that context on like what we're actually looking at here. Um, but it is all that data that I talked to earlier. That's what enables something like really cool like this to be built. Um, but if you are interested, like specifically, like you see this traffic patterns example and, and you really like it and you think that that specifically might be of interest, then I would encourage you to talk to your CSM um, and get that conversation going. Um, you know, we, we, we're always love getting that feedback, but, um, yeah, I just wanted to give that context. Um, and as I'm going through this example, I'll kind of talk to where all the data comes from. Um, it, it should be fairly obvious, but uh, kind of try to go under the hood and and kind of explain how something like this gets built. Um, awesome. Okay, so let's talk about it. Um, so what we're looking at here is a graph of all the flows in my uh, entry point. <laughs> that 311 uh, sample organization that we just looked at the data for. Um, so what we did essentially is we took all those linkages and then we put them into um, this visual graph where you could actually see high level, how are all your flows interconnected? Uh, because when you see it visually, it, it can really kind of unlike, unlock insights like rather quickly. Um, so Reno, if you go to just the um, the first node, the um, the yellow one, the uh, where it, where it all starts off. Yeah, so right there, this is where your agents land. This is the default flow on the entry point, and then Reno, if you hover over that yellow um, node, yeah. So what we did basically, all the blue arrows, that's the outgoing linkages, and that purple arrow is the incoming um, linkage. So that lets you see how your agents are going from this particular flow outward, and then how are they getting back to that flow? Um, so we did that using that flow linkage data I showed earlier. Um, and then another kind of cool thing we've done is we paired that linkage data with the uh, session event data. 
So one thing you'll notice, uh, yeah, Reno, if you, if you go to the left here, uh, yeah, right there is perfect. Um, so the way we kind of represented, like they, we kind of tried to do like a heat map of um, how often are these flows being visited and, and then put like a visual indicator to let you visually see uh, that on this graph. So what you can see um, on the right of your screen, you'll see the property building flow. That's not as dark as the animal control. So we use like kind of the darkness, uh, like the weight of the, the node there to indicate how often are agents uh, using this flow. And we did that with the session data, as I mentioned. So what we can see here is that um, there's a clear pattern of the agents going, they land on that first flow. And then it seems like the flow that they're going to, for the most part, um, all the other flows are kind of not as dark, but we can see the animal control control flow is a lot darker. So that gives us an indication, oh, here's the traffic pattern. They're going to this flow. Um, and from there, there's only one flow they can, or there's, there's multiple flows they can go to. Where are they going from animal control? Uh, it actually looks like the most frequent call they're getting is a uh, loose animal uh, slash stray. And then we can drill down further following the path of the heat map. It looks like, uh, Reno, if you go down to a loose animal close to the bottom, yeah, can you kind of drag that up? So it's just like a little more, yeah, perfect, perfect. So we can see that um, it, they're going from loose animal or they're going from loose animal, uh, yeah, to the to animal loose flow. And then Reno, there's two uh, nodes at the bottom there that create and submit. Yeah, those ones. Can you drag those just kind of, so it's, yeah, perfect. And then the end call, can you put that uh, maybe like to the right? Okay, so another thing we can see there is from that loose animal node, we can see there's two places where they could go. They can end the call, so they go to the end call flow, or they can go to the create and submit, um, I think that's service request ticket. Um, so using kind of our visualization here, we can see that that end call node is a lot darker than that other node. So that would indicate that the agents aren't, that they aren't going using that service uh, request flow. They're actually going right to end call. So it's things like that that could um, kind of uncover insights when you have it laid out visually like this. Um, yeah, and this was all built, um, again, built by engineers, so not out of the box, but it, it, it's, it's made possible by the data that's available to you through the API. Um, yeah, so I think we'll we'll pause there as well for, for questions. Yeah, David, before that, I just want to also allude to, like we kind of chatted through like the, the orphan flow. So like, as I kind of did, like I can kind of format this a little bit more. So obviously you kind of move things around to get a better kind of viewpoint, but this also helps you identify if there's any orphan flow. So if anything is not connecting back to a main entry point or whatnot, like you can actually identify this. So this is kind of an accumulation of everything David kind of walked through in Excel. And it's kind of built to kind of give you and your team that, you know, internal kind of output of, hey, you know what, there's a lot of different things behind the scenes that we can look at and investigate a little bit further. Um, and it all becomes possible with the API. So I think this is a really good kind of example that ties through all the other things we kind of chatted about. Uh, but as David kind of alluded to, we'll kind of pause, see if there's any, you know, questions uh, that the group might have here uh, specifically. Cool. Um, all right. Is there, Judy, is there any questions coming in? I can't really see on my end. Um, nothing. No, no, just the uh, ones that we covered already. Perfect. Okay. Um, more than happy to kind of keep moving on. As mentioned, uh, we have a few people moderating the chat. So if something does come to mind in a minute or two, feel free. And then we do have an allotted uh, 30 minutes at the end, should we need it uh, for an actual Q&A session to kind of, you know, once you have the full viewpoint of, of the entire presentation, you'll be able to kind of, you know, see if there's anything missing or anything not explained properly. All right, we'll get back into the deck here. So that was the example walkthrough. Uh, now we'll get into the current integration. So uh, as mentioned, you know, 2024 is really big for us to kind of expand our integration library. Um, I kind of alluded to uh, agent assist function as well. So we'll kind of pair the two to kind of show you what we built from there. Um, the one thing I want you all to keep in mind is think of the APIs in evolution. So 
we went from kind of building the API on our procedure flow kind of core foundation, and now we're able to actually build things on the API. So whether it's an example that David showed in terms of additional flow insights, the API also unlocks a lot in terms of integrations. So I'll kind of present, um, you know, the main theme of our integration for 2023 was agent assist. So I'll kind of present what we've kind of built um, there as well. Um, so this is a, a loose little formula that, you know, we've put together to kind of show you what I just kind of mentioned, uh, but the API sits on procedure flow. Um, and then once you kind of prepare procedure flow, the API built on top with other apps, such as Amazon Connect, Salesforce Genesis, you get agent assist. So this was really big for us in terms of 2023, in terms of exploring our, our functionality and how we can kind of support organizations through real-time conversation guidance. Uh, keep in mind that this formula would apply to other apps as well. So for instance, if you took another application that you're using and you paired it with the API, something other than agent assist becomes possible. So it really does kind of open the door um, to many other things. And I think I alluded to this earlier, but think of the API as a key. You're constantly unlocking different doors. So the doors we decided to open in 2023 was enabling customers like all of you to be able to kind of have the agent assist functionality um, a little bit more openly. Um, and those not familiar with agent assist, I know there's a lot of different buzzwords around it. You know, there's there's contextual knowledge popping, conversation guidance, all of them really kind of loop back into the main umbrella of agent assist. So uh, loosely put, agent assist is considered the use of artificial intelligence to help customer service representatives or support agents do their job better. It provides them with real-time suggestions, information, and responses to assist them in answering customer inquiries and solving problems more effectively. Um, as I just mentioned, agent assist, you know, is also kind of grouped within the contextual knowledge poppy and conversation guidance. Um, and these terms, depending on what industry or use case you're looking to do, are used interchangeably um, and also kind of help some find information within their crowded knowledge spaces. So that's kind of the, the output of these terms. Uh, the problem that agent assist solves is it helps agents find information faster because of the, the KB challenges that are constantly surfacing. So in a world where, you know, customer expectations are so high, agent assist really helps to kind of facilitate and really kind of bring procedure flow to that next level of, of visual knowledge. Um, and as we kind of alluded to on the previous slide, um, there's kind of three big integrations that we've kind of worked on. Um, you know, as Judy alluded to, please reach out to your CSM uh, representative to kind of, you know, learn a little bit more about what these are. Um, but as mentioned, you know, this would require some development and tech support as well. But this really kind of pairs, you know, procedure flow with an Amazon Connect, a Salesforce, a Genesis. So I'll quickly kind of walk through what's possible here. We have a lot of other resources available to you as well that we'll share after the presentation to take a layer deeper. This is more, show, more so, excuse me, about, you know, getting the creative juices flowing and kind of loosely visualizing what's possible. But um, Amazon Connect is a big one. I know a lot of our existing customers and, you know, majority of you guys are here today use Amazon Connect. So this is just an output of taking the API and connecting it to um, the existing Amazon Connect functionality. But, um, you know, as Amazon Connect transcribes, transcribes excuse me, customer calls, uh, they provide a comprehensive record of the interaction. Uh, from there, agents are then redirected to the recommended visual flow based on the conversation being analyzed. Um, so you'll see that there's a call being, you know, occurred here what's happening in the background. And this obviously works once the, the two applications are paired together. Um, you'll see that, you know, this is transcribed. You know, we heard lost or stolen credit card on the flow, um, on the conversation and the call. From there, example of recommended suggestions will pop up. And then based on how the conversation unfolds, you know what, temporary blocking cards was the main theme. They click into this and then boom, within the actual Amazon Connect UI, you were then redirected um, to the procedure flow um, flow that you know corresponds to what the customer uh, is looking to do. Um, this obviously needs to be built. This doesn't just happen overnight. So, but you know, as we get into the developer documentation and as you have conversations with your, your CSM, um, all of these things become possible, more than happy to kind of support in any way needed. The next one would be Genesis. So um, this one's a little bit more uh, text input, but with real-time chat text scanning, uh, Genesis Cloud Agent Assist empowers agents with instant knowledge base suggestions during customer interactions. So it automatically extracts flow contents, locating visual flows directly in Genesis CX Cloud. So similar to what you just saw from the Amazon uh, perspective, um, this will scan the text 
right? And then from there, it'll give kind of an output in terms of suggestion, and then boom, they'll still be kind of linked back to the corresponding procedure flow um, to kind of see what that looks like. So it's basically bringing the everyday functionality of procedure flow that you guys all know, and now it's just really kind of pairing this with other applications that your team might be using, uh, with the goal being to really get that real-time conversation guidance. Um, and I think this might be the the biggest one we've kind of worked on in 2023 and uh, we'll continue to kind of work on it, but Salesforce. Um, so this one's really big in terms of enabling procedure flow to embed within a Salesforce knowledge article directly. Um, there's a lot of logistics and behind the scenes things occurring in Salesforce. One of them is Einstein's next best action, but it'll be actually used to show a recommended visual flow based on the changes provided. So as you know, um, one of your employees is kind of walking through things from a Salesforce perspective, we'll kind of combine our functionality with the Salesforce uh, Einstein functionality to really have, you know, once changes occur in Salesforce, we'll have something like this pop up where, okay, you know what? Start service kind of seems to be the theme here. They open it and then boom, procedure flows automatically embedded within your Salesforce functionality. Um, and I think this really kind of paints the floor in terms of what we're looking to do in 2024 and beyond in terms of making this a little bit easier and a little bit more digestible uh, for your internal team as well. So I know that's a lot, as mentioned, we'll, we'll kind of paint a little bit more of a picture after the call ends in terms of getting you guys the corresponding resources available to investigate a little this a little bit further. Um, but we'll maybe just pause here to see if there's any preliminary questions uh, the team might have. Nothing coming your way, Reno. Awesome, okay. Uh, next would be the API developer documentation. So I know we have everyone here for an hour and a half. Uh, that's primarily just because we want to make sure that we have enough time allotted for questions. Uh, this will likely be the last section we go over before we kind of open the floor for any final questions. But I think this section is the most important because as David kind of alluded to, this really is kind of that bow on top, the cherry on top of the Sunday in terms of taking everything we walk through and really enabling your internal team to kind of take these guides and use them um, to, to their kind of will. So the one thing I kind of wanted to mention here is that the developer documentation can be found here. I'm going to kind of walk through it and then David's going to give a little bite size preview of each of the sections of the developer documentation. But this documentation currently lives in your procedure flow environment and can be only accessed with existing login credentials. So it's not something you can openly find on the web. Um, you know, if you have the right internal organizational permissions, you'll be able to access it no problem. Um, as we kind of alluded to, this documentation is highly technical and is usually only referenced by developers and engineers. So the goal would be to kind of identify, you know what, this is the API. I like the link visualizer as an example. How do I really set up the next steps to work with my development team or your procedure flow CSM to really kind of make this happen? Um, and then as we kind of mentioned as well, this documentation is kind of your, your final guide, right? It allows you to build some or all the things we highlight in this presentation. So we'll kind of walk through what that looks like loosely here before we get into the Q&A. So what you're looking at is the internal procedure flow environment. Uh, you'll see a little bit of a developer section highlighted within. Um, as we continue to grow our API, this will get a lot more comprehensive. For the time being, a lot of what David walked through is highlighted in here. So um, this is kind of your reference to it. And I'll kind of just you know let David kind of walk you through briefly uh, what each of these things mean. Yeah, you know, I'll keep it. I know we're not trying to have a, a technical conversation. So I'll keep it uh, really high level. But um, you know, we have an introduction of our API. Um, so, you know, what's the URL to connect to our API? That's that's all there. Um, and then if you go to authentication, uh, Reno. So obviously you don't want anybody to be able to connect to the API and take your data. You're going to need authentication. Uh, we use what's called like a personal access token, which you can generate um, if you have the right permissions in your organization. So this authentication section just talks about, you know, where you get that token, um, you know, how do you pass that token to the API? And yeah, we're using that token to authenticate that you are who you say you are when you're retrieving data about your organization. Um, and then, yeah, Reno, if you go to errors, um, you know, this is really straightforward. This is for your developers, but uh, you might encounter some uh, errors when you're uh, connected to your API. Could be a couple of reasons. So we just kind of preempt you with that context here. Uh, if you go to rate limits, uh, Reno, so there is a limit on how often you can kind of call our API. 
Um, and that rate limit is currently 60 requests um, per minute. So that should be, unless you're really a power user, that, that should be okay, but um, that's a rate limit. Um, and, and there's a little blurb on like the rate limits may change um, because we, we are kind of thinking about if you are that power user, what is that what does that look like? And how do we support somebody who's, you know, needs more requests uh, than that? Um, and then uh, really quickly on the pagination and versioning, those are more, those are, those are for your developers. Um, this is just, um, yeah, kind of a more technical aspect of the uh, API. Um, but um, yeah, you'll, your developers, this will make sense to them. Um, so that's kind of the, the first section and then Reno resources. Um, so we'll only need to click on the one of them, but I'll, I'll talk through all of them. But um, these are uh, the different like kind of data entry points you kind of have, or I shouldn't use the word entry points, but this is the different uh, data that you have available to you. Um, so you can pull data about your entry points. And then this section here kind of, um, it uh, gives an explanation of, you know, I'm looking at uh, this uh, field. What does this field mean? Where does it come from? This will, this section will give you the information like that. Um, so you can get information about your entry points, about your flows, about the session events, um, about your users. So this documentation um, gives a, an overview of, of what data is available to you um, and kind of gives like a dictionary kind of, of what you're looking at when you get that data. Yeah, that's that's kind of a high level tour of uh, the documentation. Yeah, no, that, that's great, David. I, I think the important thing to also kind of reiterate is obviously this is just intended for developers. That's why to the average eye, it might be a lot, um, but to, you know, developers and internal engineers, this is kind of the language that's spoken. So uh, not to be too alarmed, like this is something that completely makes sense to them. And as mentioned, this acts as kind of that holy Bible in terms of, okay, well, we showed you the examples of what's possible. This really kind of sets a tone and creates that foundation to actually go out and build it. Um, so that kind of actually wraps up our presentation. Uh, you know, as mentioned, we we kind of, you know, scheduled 90 minutes here because we want to make sure that we left ample time for any questions. So we'll kind of open it up there. Uh, the one thing I'll kind of reiterate before, you know, we maybe have any questions in uh, is that we have a lot more resources to kind of support what was presented today. So, you know, please reach out to your CSM after this call, um, you know, provide feedback on, on what you're maybe still lacking if, if anything does arise after the fact. Um, in terms of those integration examples we walked through, sales, so Salesforce, Genesis, uh, and Amazon Connect, we actually have video assets that kind of show you how it works in real time to really kind of reinforce um, kind of the text output we provided today. Um, and then anything else, right? It's all about supporting you guys at the end of the day. This was very high level because we didn't want to kind of overcomplicate uh, because of how, you know, technically um, limiting the, the API is in, in a way. So um, I'll kind of just leave it at that. Um, and we'll see if there's any final questions coming in uh, before we kind of wrap up today's session. There's a question here from Joel and he says, do you have any plans for webinars for developers or other resources for developers besides the API documentation? Uh, David, I can kind of take that loosely and then maybe pass it to you. So um, that's a really good question. So right now the API is, is you know, relatively uh, in its inception phase in terms of us kind of getting the foundation built and continuing to build out features. Uh, one thing we're really keen on doing is, is creating kind of like a developer evangelism community um, that will really kind of necessitate, you know, further dialogue, further Slack communities, further kind of um, output around the developer section. So right now we have the developer documentation. Uh, we'll likely have some external assets moving forward in 2024 to kind of reinforce and support a lot of that. Um, David, I'm, I'm sure you can maybe add, chime in and add a little bit there as well. But the main gist of what I'm saying is that a lot of this stuff is coming. Um, 2023 was about kind of setting it up looking at integrations, and then now we'll really kind of get into the developer stuff. Uh, we have a lot more exciting webinars coming throughout the year. Uh, so more than happy to kind of put something together for developers if, of course, we see the the need from from all of you guys as well, so. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense for you now. And, and if, there, if you do find yourself building something complex with their API, and that's, I think, when you would engage your, your CSM and, and kind of get the conversation going like that, and, you know, we're always there to support, so. We're happy to uh, provide that kind of support as well. Yeah, and, and yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry, no. <laughs> I was gonna, David made a really good point where um, you know a lot of the basis of what we presented was you know you guys having internal developer support or a team dedicated to kind of looking into the API functionality. Um, I think Dave, David kind of said it best where it's like 
not every organization has that level of support just, you know, at their, their beck and call. So as David kind of mentioned, more than happy to kind of, you know, set up things on a case by case basis where we'll work with you guys just to really understand where you're at in terms of your API or developer journey. See if there's anything that we can do internally on our end to actually kickstart things or to walk the necessary people through this documentation a little bit further. Um, at the end of the day, we're here because of all the amazing things that our customers do. So if there's anything we can do internally, please take that to your CSM and we'll kind of coordinate some next steps. Um, but really good questions. Yeah, absolutely. We'll reach out to you, Joel, Joel and then have the conversation on your requirements and, and we'll go from there. Awesome. That's it. That's it for questions, guys. Yeah, we'll give it another minute or two to see if anyone has any final thoughts. But um, yeah, we, we booked it a, a little longer in time to make sure that we gave you guys the, the floor if necessary, just because, you know, I, I know this is a lot. So I want to make sure that we simplified it uh, in the right way. I think you get the juices flowing. So once people have an opportunity to digest and, yeah. you know, think about the art of the possible in their own organizations, then they'll come up with some great ideas and, and we can have those discussions. Exactly. Yeah, Judy, that's all about the, the main theme, art of the possible. Get those creative juices flowing. Um, this, ses uh, this session has been recorded, so we'll actually be able to kind of send it out. Um, as mentioned, we have a lot of more internal resources available to you as well. Just reach out to your CSM and we can really kind of like, like I said, put the puzzle pieces together, get those juices flowing. Uh, you guys can review the presentation once more uh, to really see if there's anything else. And then, you know, as mentioned, we'll get things going on a case by case basis because uh, every organization has different needs. So we'll kind of work with you guys to see what those are and identify uh, anything we can do internally to support you guys along that journey. All right. Well, if there's oh, there no is, there, is, there is one more question oh, one more here. Question? Yep, Javier. Uh, so this is a bit like IPAAS or Unified API with connectors into different software platforms. I assume we would be able to integrate into different platforms like Nice or C4C. It's not exclusive to Salesforce, AWS, etc. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. The the API is your integration point. Um, so we've used that as our integration point for our these. For Salesforce, Genesis, and uh, AWS. Um, so, yeah, the, you, the, your, your assumption is correct. Yeah, I think that's a, a good kind of call out, David. And I think it's a final segue into the fact that uh, we've kind of focused on the, the Amazon Connects, the Salesforce Genesis. Uh, this is actually your, your, you know, your opportunity to take this key and, and start to look at other everyday applications your organization uses. Uh, this really kind of acts as a guide. Um, the exciting thing about the API is, you know, like we kind of alluded to, the, the possibilities are endless. So one thing that we'll do and we'll continue to reinforce with all of you is um, I'll make sure myself, David, and the rest of our product and engineering team is getting our, our CSMs the right information at the right time to kind of give you guys a heads up on all the other exciting things uh, we'll be building and looking to do in, in 2024. Because one of them and the main theme, of course, is, you know, expanding our integration library and our, our possibilities. So we'll keep all of you guys in the loop for sure with other things that we're looking to build too. Awesome. Well, if there's nothing else, um, I'll do one more final check here before we kind of wrap up. I don't see anything on my end. Um, Judy, can you confirm that on yours as well? No, I don't see anything. Perfect. Okay. Well, um, you know, it's 1251 Eastern time here, so we'll likely wrap up. Uh, looking forward to kind of collecting all the feedback from everyone. Uh, I didn't start the presentation with it, but happy new year. And I'm really excited to kind of work and, and support, you know, our internal team as well as you guys on, on really kind of expanding all of this and, and making it really possible. So thank you so much for your time this afternoon. And as mentioned, we'll have kind of a, a care package of things coming down the pipeline for you guys in terms of internal resources and this actual presentation that's been recorded. Fantastic. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Reno. Thanks, David. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Bye, everybody. Have a great day.